I think that sounds like a single story. In the next eight minutes, I will show you that the tweets and posts of our leaders are actually quite interesting. A month ago, I uh, received this email, a personal invitation from Barack Obama for dinner. I have to admit, I was honored. I don't know about you. I don't receive uh, emails from the White House or President Obama. Uh, anybody else receive this message in the audience? Yes, there are some. Right. There are 13 million of us who are on this email subscription list of the Barack Obama campaign. And for the next weeks, we would get more emails um, insisting, can we meet for dinner sometime soon? Even an explanation from uh, Jim Messina how this dinner thing works. And how did it work? He sent the email and said, it's, um, let me read this. It's not some kind of trick or something, it read. Donate $5 today and you will be automatically, oops, and you will be automatically entered for the chance to have dinner with the president and three other supporters. No purchase, payment or contribution necessary to enter or win, read the small print. In a couple of days, four supporters will actually have lunch with Barack Obama. I didn't apply for it because you have to be a U.S. resident or a U.S. citizen to be eligible uh, to have dinner with Barack. I have to admit, I've been fascinated by meeting presidents and prime ministers since I was young. When I was 13 years old with a friend, we decided we should send President um, uh, Jimmy Carter, formerly a peanut farmer, we should send him some of our great German beer in exchange for a bag of peanuts. So we wrapped the bottles went to the post office just to be told that we couldn't ship alcohol to the US. Well, today, thanks to social media, we can connect with our world leaders. We can comment and like their Facebook posts, we can add mention them on Twitter, and we can send them a YouTube video, like Herman van Rompuy, the president of the European Union. He is inviting people to send him questions, any question about the European Union. So far, he has replied to 20 of 70 questions Post to him. UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon sat down for a global conversation where questions came from Facebook, Twitter, and Sina Weibo, the Chinese Twitter clone, in a half hour live video broadcast just before the General Assembly. And Christine Lagarde sat down, took to her iPad for a one hour Lagarde chat where she was answering questions just before being elected as the new head of the IMF. The Rwandan president, Paul Kagame, is using Twitter solely to reply to his followers, answering questions, etc. And he got into a very, very public Twitter spat with UK journalist Paul Birrell, who said he is despotic and deluded, to which uh, Paul Kagame shot back, you have no basis for your comment and you don't know what you're talking about. Even Barack Obama started to the Twitter chat. In early July, he organized the first Twitter town hall at the White House. And for one hour, he replied to only eight tweets, um, which is not very much. Um, but he said it was a historic moment. I am going to make history here uh, as the first president to live tweet. Yes, and live tweet he did. We're seeing him here. Uh, on the computer, yes, he is live tweeting. Actually, he has only tweeted four times in his life, signing his tweets B.O. <laughs> his Twitter account, just for your information, is a campaign account with over 10 million followers. He is the most popular world leader on Twitter. And guess what he did here? He actually tweeted himself the first question. All right, I think I have done this properly, but here's the test. And you tweet it. How about that? <laughs> so what, uh, what, was your, what was your question? Here it is. Here's the question. Uh, in order to reduce the deficit, what costs so, would you cut? This is a very interesting Twitter chat where you actually send yourself the first question which you then also answer. Very well done. Um, it is sad to see that so many world leaders only discover social media during election campaigns. Example, case in point here, Dilma Rousseff, the president of Brazil. When she was elected in November 2010, she had 200,000 followers on Twitter. Um, on December 13, she sent her last tweet and said, I hope we'll get a chance to talk more here in 2011. Today, her followers, 850,000 of them, are still waiting for the next tweet. 
who says you need to tweet to have more followers? Somebody who has, who is the most, the second most popular person on Twitter is actually the uh, president of Venezuela, Hugo Chavez, who is tweeting about his chemotherapy treatment, keeping his followers up to date uh, on his fight for life. Hugo Chavez is also one of the most chattiest leaders, replying here to the president uh, of Mexico, Felipe Calderón. And somebody who has used Twitter diplomacy recently was the Swedish foreign minister, Carl Bildt, who wants to get in touch with his Bahraini counterpart. And he said, trying to get in touch with you on an issue. Um, this tweet made the, caught the world's interest for two reasons. Why did he use Twitter and not traditional diplomatic channels to contact uh, Khalid Al Khalifa? And what is this issue they wanted to talk about? So the other person who used Twitter was uh, Israeli Prime Minister just a couple of days ago trying to get in touch with Mahmoud Abbas, uh, who had just asked for the recognition of Palestine at the UN. We're in the same city, in the same building. Let's meet here today. I extend my hand in peace. This message of peace was relayed by the over 80 Twitter accounts set up by, by the Israeli Foreign Ministry for its consulates and embassies around the world. The president of the Palestinian Authority is not on Twitter, and his prime minister, who is, did not reply. 1-0 for Israeli in the online information war. Two governments are using Twitter very well. The Chilean and the Mexican governments have pushed their ministers and ministries onto Twitter to reply to their citizens in 140 characters. This makes every minister much more accountable in front of their citizens, um, which is a, gr a great example. Of course, Twitter is used very often just to broadcast the message. The Elysee Palace was hoping that this picture, taken in Benghazi with the interim leader of Libya, would make history. So far, it has only been viewed by 320 people. 83,000 people have seen this picture of uh, Russian President uh, Dmitry Medvedev, who was testing uh, a compact camera underwater in the Volga River. His verdict is it's, not, uh, it's interesting, but the quality is not very good. Dmitry Medvedev has also taken to Facebook, where he congratulates his peers on their national holidays. This message to the Chinese leader, however, fell on deaf ears because Hu Jintao is not on Facebook. Facebook is banned in China, as you know. You can now connect with your leaders on the iPhone. The Turkish president is on the iPhone, the Dutch royal household, and the ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed. Um, and what is really great about all this is sometimes these leaders show their passion. Here, Venezuela's Hugo Chavez about supporting the, the Venezuelan football team. And this makes it also interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Our world leaders on social networks, when they do it personally, become human and accessible. And this is something for the man in the street, some, something absolutely revolutionary, because today we can simply send them an app mention to get in contact with them. And my wish for the TED community is that you go out and you contact your leaders on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you very much.